As early Mughal traders moved across Asia, they came to the eastern side of India, now known as Bangladesh. They discovered a land rich in beauty and natural resources, with an enormous network of rivers flowing out to the sea. Her splendor quickly attracted ships from afar, hungry for the riches of South Asia. By the 16th century, this region became known as one of the wealthiest of the entire Indian subcontinent. However, as the years progressed, her people saw both natural disasters and social upheavals rob her of her former glory. The world was left with images of a poor and war-torn land. A veil of hopelessness and despair hides the beauty of Bangladesh and her people, the Bengalis. A veil which prevents them from experiencing God's love and forgiveness. Though many have heard of her suffering, few have seen the beauty that lies beyond the veil. The Bengali Muslims, beyond the veil. The Bengalis, thriving in the glow of past cultural splendor and still suffering under the ravages of war, this is symbolized even by their national flag, the green of their beautiful fertile valleys surrounding the red of bloodshed. From the time that the Mughal Empire was established until her independence in the early 1970s, Bengalis have struggled for a nation of their own. India gained independence not long after World War II, but the struggle for self-government in Bengal was complicated by internal religious tension between the Muslims and Hindus. The British petitioned the subcontinent, turning the predominantly Muslim regions of Punjab and Bengal into West and East Pakistan. West Pakistan still ruled both sides and declared that Urdu would be the national language. The Bangla-speaking Bengalis refused, launching a drive for cultural identity that eventually made way for their independence. When a Bengali nationalist party was not allowed to take office, riots led to a civil war with the Pakistan army. The result was one of the shortest and bloodiest revolutions in history, with the nation of Bangladesh, meaning land of the Bengalis, officially becoming its own in 1971. With a population density of more than 2,200 people per square mile, Bangladesh is one of the most densely populated nations on earth. The majority of Bengali Muslims live in Bangladesh and comprise 87% of the population. Other Bengali Muslims populate areas to the west and east of Bangladesh. Bangladesh sits at the head of the Bay of Bengal, directly in the path of some of the world's most powerful tropical storms. Each year, the flood-swollen rivers recreate the patchwork of fields and paddies, refreshing the land with its precious nutrients. Yet, because Bangladesh survives almost solely on its agriculture, these disasters can also devastate the fragile economy. Most Bengalis live as farmers in small villages, spread out across the humid and wide open landscape. Rice, jute and tea are the three principal sources of foreign exchange. Rivers and tributaries form a vast transportation network, far superior to the limited road system, facilitating trade, travel and communication. With such a large network of waterways, many Bengalis also make their living from fishing, making Bangladesh one of the largest exporters of fish in the world. In recent years, many villagers have been drawn to the lights of the capital city of Dhaka and try to survive among her 10 million inhabitants. Unfortunately, due to the fierce competition and lack of jobs, many become beggars living in cardboard shacks, struggling to feed their families. Those who do find work still barely get by on the little money they earn. 
If they're lucky, they might become rickshaw drivers, only earning the equivalent of $3 a day. The average yearly income of a Bengali is $230, US the lowest in Asia. Children often start working before the age of 10 to augment their meagre family incomes. Even though economic growth has been slow, new technology and business methods are assisting a new generation who have their eyes set on changing the world's view of their country. New restaurants, shops and hotels compete for both the Bengali and foreigners' patronage. As Western culture slowly makes its mark on the city lifestyle, Bengalis still remain faithful to their unique cultural expressions. They're renowned for their lyrical Bengali poetry and music. Bengali stories are often shown in the colourful artwork displayed on their taxis and rickshaws. At a Bengali's engagement party, a Muslim priest presides over the groom's preparation, while the bride-to-be is beautifully adorned in gold and silk saris and intricately designed henna-stained hands. Her female relatives are by her side as she waits patiently to meet her groom, whom she has never met. Bengalis love to wear festive clothing during these special ceremonies and religious festivals. The most widely observed of the festivals is Eid al-Fitri, after a month-long period of fasting called Ramadan. Millions of Bengali Muslims gather at mosques for morning prayers. During this celebration, they commemorate the sacrifice of Abraham's son by sacrificing a goat or a cow as an atonement for their sins. Gifts are exchanged and the meat of the sacrificed animals is distributed among the poor. Although this is supposed to be a time of forgiveness and joy, most Bengalis still do not know the love and forgiveness of Jesus. Folk Islamic religious practices, such as wearing amulets, demonstrate their continual fear of evil spirits. They know of no other hope, for the veil covers their eyes, their minds, their hearts. Bengali Muslims are the largest, least evangelized people group in the world, numbering nearly 140 million people. With fewer than one worker for every million Bengali Muslims, they have very little hope of hearing about Jesus unless more believers are willing to go beyond the veil. God is calling his people through prayer, church planting, mercy ministries, and Christian media to reach the Bengali Muslims. The harvest among Bengali Muslims is ripe but the workers are few. Bengali believers need to be equipped and encouraged to reach out to their own people. Foreigners committed to investing in the lives of Bengalis through discipleship and Bible teaching can have a vital role in establishing the church. In the past 20 years, a move of God has brought several thousands of Muslims to faith in Christ. House churches are growing and some converts retain their Muslim style of prayer and Bible study while meeting for Friday prayers. Pray for the identity of emerging fellowships and leaders that they might be both biblically sound as well as culturally relevant. I got saved in 1975 and since then I've been serving the Lord in our city and all over Bangladesh. I'm personally happy and overjoyed to know the interest that is there to pray for our nation. Our nation is famous for all the disasters and natural calamities we face. But I want you to know that all the reports that are coming in shows us that God is doing some sovereign move of His Holy Spirit in our land. <laughs> Both short and long-term workers are needed to join in this move of the Holy Spirit. From church planters to medical workers.
We're here because of the poor people, the poor people who don't have anyone to speak for them and they don't have a voice and uh, they're suffering a lot. We treat 45,000 patients uh, every year at this clinic. There is only one doctor for every 5,000 Bengali people. Bangladesh yearly relies on some $2 billion in foreign aid, providing nearly 90% of the country's development budget. This is Moina. She's a new believer and her child has a disease where his bones do not make blood. So every month we've been getting blood for her child and through this care and concern she became a believer. And she says that it, when she doesn't come to the clinic, she doesn't feel peaceful. Uh, we have a full-time evangelist at the clinic and we're very closely related with the church and mission organizations in the area. My first visit in Bangladesh was in 1987. At that time, I came with a short-term team. I didn't know much about Bangladesh. But while I was here, the Lord really touched my heart and gave me His heart for the people. So I prayed and I asked Him to open doors to serve in this nation. And God has been faithful since 1988. I'm here in Bangladesh. Now I work in this medical clinic which serves the poor. Every day about 80 patients come and receive medical treatment. There are many opportunities to share with them and pray with them. Development projects and cooperative ventures to assist and support nationals are being started by some ministries. Missions have been welcomed by the government because of these and other beneficial programs. Since a high proportion of the population is illiterate, culturally relevant audio-visuals are being effectively utilised to share the gospel message. Young Christian students are sharing on university campuses. Students are requesting Bibles and are curious to know more of God's truth. Radio. Bible correspondence courses and literacy ministries help nurture both seekers and new believers. Actually in Bangladesh there are many opportunities not only in the medical field but in education and in development. Please, we need workers here. Would you pray and ask God how you would like you to be involved in this great harvest? Pray also with us that God would send uh, uh, believers, workers outside in the field. There are many areas where we don't have any Christian witness. We'll appreciate your prayer that God will release uh, workers into our country. And whenever you think of Bangladesh, just remember to pray for us because God is going to do something great in our land. Blessings of God be upon you. Reach, reaching out in desperation in a dying For many years, the church has struggled to be established in this spiritually dark area of the world. As the body of Christ, let us look beyond the veil and see the Bengalis as Jesus sees them and reach out in His love and healing. We are His heart, His heart.